not claws. This is a primate, just from seeing that image of that foot, it was really a wake-up call for me. Apes, monkeys and us all belong to one particular group of mammals, the primates. And the common feature we all share is four fingers and an opposable thumb, a characteristic we share with this 47 million year old fossil. Could we be related? Looking at the hand, uh, you can see that it's got five fingers, of course, and nails on all the fingers. But also, the thumb is opposable, like us. So it can grasp things, it can hold things the same way we do today. It's already there 47 million years ago. It's a, it's a, it's a proper hand to hold around things. To properly analyze the fossil, Jörn must share his secret. He handpicks a small team of experts, each a world leader in their discipline. I knew immediately that this fossil was too important, so I started to invite people in to make a dream team around this fossil, to make the first description really proper. If I would do it alone, I'm not an expert in, uh, in primates, but there are some good people around the world, and I invited the best ones to, uh, to join me, and they all said yes. Dr. Holly Smith is a dental anthropologist. By studying the fossil's teeth, she will be able to determine what the creature ate, its age, and how it compares to other primates. The fossil could be the ancestor of prosimians and apes and monkeys and the lineage leading up to man. Joining the team is Dr. Jens Fransen, a renowned fossil expert who has been waiting for an opportunity such as this. This is by far the most complete fossil primate ever found on the world. And we have not only the complete skeleton, but we have also the complete soft body outline and we have the gut content. So, what do you want more, yeah? Hi, <laughs> it's nice to see you. <laughs> How was the flight? Professor Philip Gingerich is the next on board. He spent his life searching for links between early and modern mammals. I suppose one of my initial thoughts was, this is a big job, this will be a lot of work. Uh, partly because there isn't anything else like it, and so it really deserves to be compared carefully with all the various fragmentary fossils we have, and also with the skeletons of the living ones. And you put all that together, that's a big work. They plan a long and thorough study. They must be certain of their conclusions before they reveal the fossil to the world. Until then, they will work in secret on their extraordinary treasure. As soon as they start their analysis, the fossil begins to come to life before their eyes. Well, the pelvic region, of course, um, it's, it's possible actually to tell the sex from this area. In, in this region, you will expect to see a buckleum or not. All primates at that time possessed a penis bone known as a baculum. We now know from looking at the specimen that there's no baculum present. So this is a girl, this is a small female that lived 47 million years ago. The investigation is gathering pace. The next question is where does she come from? And it's the way her delicate body has been preserved and not her skeleton that provides the answers. There's only one locality in the world where this transfer technique that the fossils are put in this kind of polyester, that all the fossils are prepared like this. This is the only place. All the major primate fossil finds until now have been made in Africa. But this one has been prepared using resin, a technique used not in Africa, but in Germany. The 
fossil was found here, in a place known as the Messel Pit. There is nowhere in the world like it. It's an ancient crater filled with an unrivaled collection of fossils, all dating from the Eocene period, 47 million years ago. It's like a peak hole into a, a whole community, a whole ecological ecosystem in the Eocene, that suddenly you see that everything you find usually as small pieces of things, you have complete in this one locality, one place in the world. And that's, that's, that's something that paleontologists really, really treasure. So this is like a holy grail for paleontology. Dinosaurs were long extinct. The shales of Messel had already yielded fossil birds, reptiles and amphibians, complete with the impression of their feathers, scales and skin. The biggest ants ever known. And beetles, still with their colour after millions of years. Preserved in incredible detail are bats, snakes, and even a miniature horse the size of a small dog. The first glimpses of kinds of creatures that are alive today. The Eocene period is really the critical stage for uh, mammal evolution. It's when all the old timers, they are still around and the newcomers are coming strongly into the field. We have the first horses, the first carnivores, the first bats, the first whales. All these new mammals are evolving in the Eocene and of course the primates, they are thriving. But which were our ancestors? Until now, no complete primate has ever been found in the Messel Pit. And even this specimen was almost lost forever. Fossil hunters have dug in the Messel Pit for generations, collecting and selling the specimens as works of art. Just as such a fossil hunter must have dug this primate from the shale. Who this was is still a mystery, but we do know they took her away, perfectly preserved her in resin, and locked her away from view for 25 years. It's like having your unknown Rembrandt, your unknown Van Gogh at home. You can see it every day, the rest of the world don't know about it, and it makes you kind of feel powerful, I think, to have something like that. Fortunately, now she's with Jörn, her secrets can be revealed to the world. And the team in Oslo are starting to examine and describe her skeleton bone by bone. But why are fossils from the Messel pit so well preserved? It's thanks to the formation of the Messel pit 50 million years ago. Deep underground, molten rock magma forced its way upwards. Just below the surface it met a layer of ground water. Superheated steam generated incredible pressure. The rock was ripped apart. A series of massive explosions created a crater a mile wide. Inside its steep walls an incredibly deep lake formed. It was probably at least a hundred meters deep, and the waters were still. When animals fell in, they drifted down and were soon